Welcome to the Barrow Bookstore audio series. Recollection of Mystical Experiences by Margaret Fuller, 1840. It was Thanksgiving Day, November 1831, and I was obliged to go to church or exceedingly displease my father. I almost always suffered much in church from a feeling of disunion with the hearers and dissent from the preacher, but today, more than ever before, the services jarred upon me from their grateful and joyful tone. I was wearied out with mental conflicts and in a mood of most childish, childlike sadness. I felt within myself great power and generosity and tenderness, but it seemed to me as if they were all unrecognized and as if it was impossible that they should be used in life. I was only one and twenty. The past was worthless, the future hopeless, Yet I could not remember ever voluntarily to have done a wrong thing, and my aspiration seemed very high. I looked round the church and envied all the little children, for I suppose they had parents who protected them so that they could never know this strange anguish, this dread uncertainty. I knew not then that none could have any father but God. I knew not that I was not the only lonely one, that I was not the elected Oedipus, the special victim of an iron law. I was in haste for all to be over, that I might get into the free air. I walked away over the fields as fast as I could walk. This was my custom at the time, when I could no longer bear the weight of my feelings and fix my attention on any pursuit. For I do believe I never voluntarily gave way to these thoughts one moment. The force I exerted, I think, even now, greater than I ever knew in any other character. But when I could hear myself no longer, I walked many hours, till the anguish was wearied out, and I returned in a state of prayer. Today, all seemed to have reached its height. It seemed as if I could never return to a world in which I had no place, to the mockery of humanities. I could not act a part, nor seem to live any longer. It was a sad and sallow day of the late autumn. Slow processions of sad clouds were passing over a cold blue sky. The hues of earth were dull and gray and brown, with sickly struggles of late green here and there. Sometimes, a moaning gust of wind drove late reluctant leaves across the path. There was no life else. In the sweetness of my present peace, such days seemed to me made to tell man the worst of his lot. But still, that November wind can bring a chill of memory. I paused beside a little stream, which I had envied in the merry fullness of its spring life. It was shrunken, voiceless, choked with withered leaves. I marveled that it did not quite lose itself in the earth. There was no stay for me, and I went on and on till I came to where the trees were thick about a little pool, dark and silent. I sat down there. I did not think. All was dark and cold and still. Suddenly the sun shone out with that transparent sweetness like the last smile of a dying lover, which it will use when it has been unkind all a cold autumn day. And even then, passed into my thought a beam from its true sun, from its native sphere, which had never since departed from me. I remembered how, a little child, I had stopped myself one day on the stairs and asked, how came I here? How is it that I seem to be this Margaret Fuller? What does it mean? What shall I do about it? 
I remembered all the times and ways in which the same thought had returned. I saw how long it must be before the soul can learn to act under these limitations of time and space and human nature. But I saw also that it must do it, that it must make all this false true, and so new and immortal plants in the garden of God before it can return again. I saw that there was no self, that selfishness was all folly and the result of circumstance, that it was only because I thought self real that I suffered, that I had only to live in the idea of the all, and all was mine. This truth came to me, and I received it unhesitatingly, so that I was for that hour taken up into God. In that true ray, most of the relations of earth seemed mere films, phenomena. My earthly pain at not being recognized never went deep after this hour. I had passed the extreme of passionate sorrow, and all check, all failure, all ignorance have seemed temporary ever since. When I consider that this will be nine years ago next November, I am astonished that I have not gone on faster since, that I am not yet sufficiently purified to be taken back to God. Still, I did but touch then on the only haven of insight. You know what I would say. I was dwelling in the ineffable, the unutterable. But the sun of earth set, and it grew dark around. The moment came for me to go. I had never been accustomed to walk alone at night, for my father was very strict on that subject, but now I had not one fear. I went into the churchyard, and there offered a prayer as holy, if not as deeply true, as any I know now. A prayer which perhaps took form as the guardian angel of my life. If that word in the Bible, Selah, means what gray-headed old men think it does, when they read aloud, it should be written here, Selah. Since that day, I have never been more completely engaged in self, but the statue has been emerging, though slowly, from the block. Others may not see the promise, even of its pure symmetry, but I do, and am learning to be patient. I shall be all human yet, and then the hour will come to leave humanity and live always in the pure ray. This first day I was taken up, but the second time the Holy Ghost descended like a dove. I went out again for a day, but this time it was spring. I walked in the fields of Groton, but I will not describe that day, its music still sounds too sweetly near. Suffice it to say, I gave it all into our Father's hands, and was no stern weaving fate more, but one elected to obey and love, and at last, no. Since then I have suffered, as I must suffer again, till all the complex be made simple, but I have never been in discord with the grand harmony. This has been a reading of Recollection of Mystical Experiences by Margaret Fuller, presented by the Barrow Bookstore, located in historic Concord, Massachusetts, home of the authors and American transcendentalism. Reading by Jamie Lee. Thank you for listening. Join us next week as the Barrow Bookstore audio series continues with short stories and readings by Concord authors and beyond. Thank you.